the full NASCAR 2021 schedule is about to be released. There have been some leaks, there have been some everything. It's going to come out any minute, but this is all but confirmed. But, oh my gosh, they didn't make some minor tweaks. They didn't flip a couple races in the playoffs. They didn't flip a couple races in the regular season. It is a complete redo almost. Uh, I won't say complete redo, but there are a lot of new dates added. There are a lot of switches in the schedule. Lots of tracks lost dates. Some lost dates completely. Some got new dates, tracks we've never been to, tracks that we haven't been to in 50 years. And there's one big difference in one race. And we'll talk about that. The first thing I do want to go through is the schedule first. Then we will get into my thoughts on the schedule. Uh, talk about it more, go into more details. So here we go. What we've been waiting for for so long the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series schedule. February 9th will be the Daytona Road Course Clash. Then we will have the duels at Daytona on February 11th. The Daytona uh, 500 will keep its date as the first race on the schedule on February 14th. And then February 21st will be Homestead Miami Speedway. Uh, then we will go to Auto Club Las Vegas Phoenix for the West, Co West Coast Swing. Then we will go to Atlanta on March 21st. On March 28th, we will go to Bristol, but it will be different. It will be a dirt race. So we will go to Bristol in the dirt. Then we will take a week off and then return to Martinsville on April 10th. Then go to Richmond on April 18th. Then go to Talladega, Kansas. Darlington will now have two races. The first being on Mother's Day, Sunday, May 9th. And then go to Dover on May 16th. And then for the first time ever, NASCAR will be going to the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas on May 23rd. Then we will go to the Coca-Cola 600, and then Sonoma uh, will be June 6th. And then for the first time ever, the NASCAR All-Star Race will be heading to Texas Motor Speedway on June 13th. Nashville Super Speedway will be June 20th. Uh, the Pocono Doubleheader the 26th and 27th. And then uh, Road America will be on the 4th of July. Uh, it's first race there in, I think, 50-plus years. And then Atlanta will get a second date July 11th, uh, New Hampshire July 18th. Then we will take a couple of weeks off for the Olympics. Remember, the Olympics was supposed to be this year, but due to the pandemic was moved to 2021. And then we will go a couple weeks off, go to Watkins Glen, and then we will go to Indianapolis. But it won't be the Oval. It will actually be the road course. Uh, then we will go to Michigan. Michigan loses one of its dates. Uh, Daytona will be the regular season finale again on the Oval. And then we will go to Dar the playoff schedule is basically the same except Texas and Kansas are switched. Uh, so Darlington, Richmond, Bristol, Las Vegas, Talladega, Roval, Texas, Kansas, Martinsville, and Phoenix will be the championship yet again. So to say there are some small changes, that is a the definition of an understatement. They changed a lot. Let's talk about some of the highlights. Some of the highlights, Chicago Land and Kentucky no longer have NASCAR Cup Series dates. I'm really sad to see Chicago go. That was one of the best mile and a half tracks. We saw, uh, obviously, Larson and Kyle Busch with that incredible finish a couple years ago. But a really good racing there recently. Um, Multi-groove mile and a half track, fast mile and a half. I'm really sad to see that one go. And then Kentucky, Kentucky's been weak. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that one leaving. But obviously a big hit for both of those tracks, both of those areas. Uh, to lose NASCAR from their schedule. I'm, I think that was their biggest series that they had at those tracks. So obviously a big loss for those uh, two tracks. Unfortunate to see for them, but they had better options. Michigan loses a date. Uh, yeah, they, they fans have been asking for Kentucky, Texas, and Michigan to lose dates, and we got that wish. Uh, Kentucky is losing its date altogether. Michigan lost a date, and Texas lost a date. Uh, Texas, obviously, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. They are getting the all-star race. Uh, they have been cut down to one date uh, for points paying race because Circuit of the Americas will get that other date. Uh, we talked about that a couple weeks ago when it was first rumored, talked about, uh, reported on. So obviously a big deal that Texas Motor Speedway will be getting the all-star race, a big marketing uh, pull, I'm assuming. Um, but wow, big wow is all I got to say. And then uh, some other things we're going to talk about. Road America is coming back to the Cup Series. I think it used to be a track uh, on the Cup Series schedule, not while I've been a fan, but um, it's going to be a race now, July 4th weekend. So we're going to have the July 4th race, America's birthday at the Road of America. Woo! Anyways, um, then Bristol, obviously, a dirt race. That's a big deal. 
Wow. Um, then Atlanta's got two dates. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't think I am, but if Nashville's getting their date. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, anyways, so we're going to talk about all this. Anyways, my first thoughts. Let's go through the schedule. Daytona, uh, Homestead are the first two races. Apparently, that's like a marketing thing, trying to get people to go to both uh, Florida races, uh, keep them right there next to each other just for a marketing standpoint, try to get some package or something. So if you go to the 500, you'll get a ticket to Miami or something. I don't know, but they're trying to say, hey, the fans are in Florida. Keep them in Florida. See if they'll go to Homestead too. So that's going to be your start. You're going to go to Daytona. Then you're going to go down south uh, to Miami, Homestead Miami Speedway. That's, I think that's a good move. I, I like it. Then we go to our normal West Coast swing. Nothing to talk about there. It's our normal West Coast Vegas or Auto Club Vegas, Phoenix. Nothing there. Then we go to Atlanta. Atlanta's been after the West Coast swing this year. Uh, so, okay. We didn't get to see it in play this year because of the big Rona. But, uh, yeah, it, it's there. Nothing to complain about. Then the first big story. The first big hit. The Bristol Dirt Race. Oh, my gosh. I never thought I'd see the day where NASCAR was on dirt. But here we are. A lot of people are really pissed off about this. They, like, they're acting like it, they've, been, they've been stabbed in the heart. Honestly, I'm going to give this race a chance. I really like the idea of trying stuff new. You know, NASCAR fans, they complain about everything you give them. You give them what they want, they complain. You don't give them what they want, obviously, they complain. But they complain a lot. I like to be optimistic. And I think this could be a really good thing. You know, we talk about how we want less mile and a half. So we want less 550 package races or whatever. And we want to try new things. We want more short tracks, more, more uh, whatever it's called, road courses. Well... This is something new. Uh, I personally don't like that they took away a race from the regular Bristol. Bristol always puts on show, but I think I know why they did this, and that's the attendance. We look at the past few spring races at Bristol compared to the night race attendance, and it's been terrible. Uh, that place can hold up to 100,000 people, I think, and the fact that they have to shut off the turn stands just to fill up the straightaway grandstands is a little sad. But the dirt race, I think that will pull in a ton of fans to go to the first ever or first time in a while Bristol dirt race. Um, I think that's going to pull in a lot of fans. I think that's why they did it. That's just my opinion. I think they did it for the fans. I think they haven't been getting the attendance they've wanted in the spring recently. So they said, hey, let's try something new. Let's try to throw some dirt on it. See how that works out. Uh, see if we can attract some more fans. And I think it will. I think it'll have a high attendance in the spring. But it's unfortunate that we lose a Bristol race, but I do think we should look at this Bristol dirt race with optimism. People are saying, oh, why can't we go to a local dirt track uh, and race there, the real dirt track? Well, as great as that sounds, they don't. I don't think they have the seating capacity of Bristol Motor Speedway. And you want to sell tickets. You want to make it a big event. No, no disrespect to these short tracks or these uh, small dirt tracks that they have. I'm, they put on incredible racing, but... They don't have the seating. They don't have the name of a Bristol Motor Speedway, you know? Uh, so it's kind of hard to compete with Bristol Motor Speedway if they can throw dirt on it. So I think that'll be a really interesting race. I think that's going to be chaotic. I love chaos, in my opinion. Uh, chaos makes everything more exciting. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. But, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. And then we got some more regular races. Martinsville, Richmond, Talladega, Kansas, Darlington. Darlington has two races again. I love it. And some other great news that comes with it, Darlington and Nashville will be running the 750 package. Uh, so what that means is this year Darlington ran, the, and last year they ran the 550 package with high downforce. Uh, this upcoming year, Darlington and Nashville, uh, both about one and a quarter mile. Darlington's like 1.36 miles, I think. Um, those two tracks will be running the 750 package with low downforce. So more driver ability, uh, more horsepower, more speed on the straightaways, more driving. That's the most I know how to say. Um, but anyways, that's a big deal. Fans have been asking. They don't like this package, but next year is the last year of this car. So uh, to completely change the package last minute would just be a waste of time and money for NASCAR teams. So they're probably going to keep it the same. But uh, other than that, they're going to add on Darlington and Nashville along to the short track and road course packages. So um, obviously... You're gonna see you're gonna see more speed there, I guess. But 
Uh, that's the big news there. I think Darlington getting two dates is great. I think it deserves two dates versus a track like a Michigan, a Texas. They put on better racing. It's straight up. I love Texas Motor Speedway. It has a great place in my heart from growing up there. But, dude, Darlington's had better racing. Darlington deserves a second date. Uh, I don't think it should take away from the Southern 500. I think the Southern, Southern 500 is going to be a crown jewel still. Um, I think it's still going to be a big weekend the other weekend, this May weekend. So, uh, yeah, I think it's still a big deal. Looking at the next race, Dover. Dover has been cut from two to one race. We knew that because of Nashville's taking their second date. Uh, and then we go to the Circuit of the Americas. The first time NASCAR will be going to Coda. More road courses. I personally love road courses. I think they're really fun races. It really shows new driver skills. Uh, gives other guys opportunities who aren't as great at the ovals uh, to win at these races. And it, the road courses are just fun. The twists and turns, the beauty around some of these tracks like Watkins Glen. It's really fun to see. I personally enjoy it. I really love road courses. So uh, I think new road courses are going to be really fun this upcoming year. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out. I think Circuit of the Americas is a great addition. It's a great new uh, area. Uh, we see Texas Motor Speedway up in, in the northern part of Texas in the DFW area. And yeah, they get a lot of fans from there, but it's really hard to pull some of these fans from Austin, San Antonio, Houston, because they're three or four hours away, which is a long drive. Or a, you still got to pay money. You got to pay money to travel and stuff. Uh, there are a lot of NASCAR fans who are obviously dedicated to traveling, going to races, but that's still a long drive, even though it is in state. Um, but I think Circuit of the Americas has a whole new pull. You got all those cities right there, Houston, San Antonio, obviously it's in Austin, so it's right there. So I think that's a huge pull. I think that's a great idea for NASCAR to add a race here. Uh, I hope I can go to it. That'd be pretty cool to go to the first ever Circuit of the Americas race. But uh, yeah, I really like that. Coke 600. Yeah, expected that. Uh, Sonoma, June 6th, and then we go to the Texas All-Star Race. I really want to see them test something here. I want to see them throw it in a new package, uh, throw in the Texas road course, I don't know, throw in something different. But uh, yeah, it's it's there. I have high expectations, or not high expectations, I have uh, good expectations. I'll probably go to that race if I'm in town that time. Um, yeah, I, I love Texas Motor Speedway. I hope it can put on a good all-star race. I think it'll be interesting. I talked about it a couple weeks ago. Go back and watch that video. Then we go to Nashville. Nashville. Uh, it's that 1.2-mile track, I think, or that 1.3-mile track. I talked about that already, too, but I love new tracks. Let's get them out. The, okay, let's let's hold on. Let's, let's do a count real quick of how many new tracks we got. Is Bristol Dirt, I guess we're counting that as a new track. One, Circuit of the Americas. Um, Nashville. Road America, and Indianapolis Road Course. It's five new tracks. Unless I missed something. I don't think I did. Anyways, uh, looking back at this schedule, looking at some of the new changes, uh, the Pocono Doubleheader, we're going to have an opportunity to do that with fans. This past year, due to the big Rona, we weren't able to do it, uh, which was really unfortunate to see. I've been to a Pocono race. It's a great venue. It's a great track to be at. Obviously, the racing hasn't been great there in the past couple of years, but you know what? It's a fun time at the track. It's a great location. It's a beautiful area. Um, so hopefully they can, we can have a normal race weekend, full fans being able to be there, and uh, they can sell some tickets for both those races. I think it'll be a really fun weekend uh, for NASCAR fans that do go to those races. So I hope that they can get that doubleheader in. Then the most American thing ever on America's birthday. We'll go into Road America. America! You know, um, but anyways, I think that's the the fact that July 4th is on Sunday makes it interesting. Uh, Road America on the 4th of July. I like this idea. I really do. Road America is about a four mile road course. Uh, the Xfinity series has been running there. I think the truck series, at least the Xfinity series has been running there. And it's a short race or not a short race, but there's a little amount of laps because it's such a big track. And I really love, I've talked about how much I love road courses. And you know what? I think this is a good addition. Um, some, they've had some good races. They've had some good finishes there at Road America. They've had some different winners. I know Brendan Gaughan won there. I like Brendan Gaughan. Um, so I think that's going to be a really interesting experience, interesting track layout, or not layout, but interesting track to be added on. Uh, it's a beautiful track from what I can see, uh, from what I've heard. So I think that's a, that's a great addition by NASCAR. Uh, Atlanta getting a second date. I think, here's my honest opinion. 
with this package, boy oh boy. Ugh. But I do like Atlanta. Atlanta's one of my favorite mile and a halfs. Before this package, it was one of my favorite mile and a halfs. Uh, we look at some of the past races that are 2014. Incredible race. Uh, Casey Kane, Matt Kenseth dueling it out for the win. 2011, incredible race. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson dueling it out for the win. Even 2012 was a good race. Um, 2015 or 16, one of them was a really good race, if I remember correctly. But uh, ever, and then even 2017, Keselowski and Larson had a pretty good battle for the win. Um, but yeah, and then they, they did this package, and this, like this year's race was bad. This year's race was horrible. Um, but yeah, I, th I really do like Atlanta, so I think they do deserve two dates versus a Texas, Michigan, tracks like that. So I think that is a win for Atlanta. I think that's a good choice, but uh, I, I, I'm not looking forward to the package. Um, but New Hampshire keeping a normal summer date, cool. Watkins Glen keeping its date, cool. The Olympic break, cool. Indianapolis Road Course. I watched the Xfinity race for that. Oh my gosh, that was one of the best races I've ever seen. At the Indianapolis Road, road Course with the Xfinity Series, if the Cup Series can put on a show like that, this might be the, one of the best races next year. The layout for this course has everything. You got long straightaways where you can get some really high speed. You go into high braking areas. You got some twisty turns and stuff. You got some more long stretches. You got some, uh, you get back on the oval for a bit. You have a chicane or something. Then you get back on the oval. It's a really fun layout. And it provided some great racing for the Xfinity Series. I think that it's going to be huge. But we do lose the Brickyard 400 because of this. We lose the the uh, oval race because of that. No two races in Indianapolis, just one. And that will be the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course, which does lock something. If they never go back to the oval, Jeff Gordon will be the winningest Brickyard 400 winner. So he will have the most wins um, at Indianapolis. And it also locks up him winning at the Indianapolis, the Brickyard 400, with every year that ends in four. 1994, 2004. 2014 so jeff gordon fans unite and celebrate but anyways i really am looking forward to this indianapolis motor speedway road course uh i think it would be fun i think that's supposed to be a double header with indycar too so we may see jimmy johnson on uh the indycar side and then nascar on the sunday side or on the nascar side and what if he decides to do both what if he does i'm just saying i don't know but i'm just saying um, but anyways, I think that's going to be a really good addition. Uh, if it's anything like the Xfinity race, oh my gosh, I'm excited. That Xfinity finish was thrilling. I absolutely loved it. Uh, if that's just a sneak preview of what we could get in cup, I am looking forward to that. Uh, then we go to Michigan. Michigan loses one date. Good. I'm glad they lost a day. I'm glad they're still on the schedule though. That's a, that's a fast track. I really do. I used to enjoy the racing there a lot. It's, it's gone down a little bit over the past couple of years. Like I, I could blame the package, but 2018's race with Harvick dominating. And I think it was Logano winning the other. Those were not what I would call great races. So, uh, I could blame the package, but something's just missed, been missing there for the past couple of years. But Really fast track. I'm glad they get a date. And then we obviously go back to the Coke 0400 as a playoff cutoff race. I'm really glad that they're doing that again. Uh, even though Jimmy Johnson missed the cut, that was a really fun cutoff race for the playoffs this year. That was some of the most fun I've had watching a cutoff race in my 10 years of being a fan. Uh, the chaos, the suspense, the not knowing what's going to happen the next lap and those winding laps. Um, that was a really fun cutoff race. I'm glad they kept this. And as for the playoff schedule, it's basically the same with Texas and Kansas flipping dates. I have nothing to complain about there. Um, yeah, I, I got nothing to complain about. I like that Phoenix is getting the championship again. I hope they can put on a great show this year and next year. But uh, in conclusion, this has been a long video. I told you it'd be a long video. Once again, the Daytona 500 was the only thing I predicted right. It's staying as the first race of the year. Booyah, one for one, and then everything else was wrong. One for 36, baby. Um, yeah, for real, though. Um, I really do like this schedule. I'm a road course fan. I think this is the max amount of road courses we do, though, in one year. We can alternate road courses every year. We can do, like, Road America one year, 
and then we can do mid Ohio the next and then road America and then mid Ohio or something like that. We could alternate dates, but five or six, how many do we have? We have Sonoma, Circuit of the Americas, uh, road America, Indianapolis road course and Roval. I think five is the max five or six is the maximum amount of road courses. Don't do any more. If you do less, make sure you pick the right ones. Make sure you pick the right ones. Do not pick like a, a bad road course. But I think this is good. I think this is a good amount of road courses. I like that they shuffled up some of the dates. I like that Atlanta and Darlington are getting two dates versus tracks like Michigan and Texas. Uh, I think they deserve it much more, even though some of the racing has been down at Atlanta um, recently. I think that, you know what? I think they deserve a second date, so that's a good call. Um, but yeah, as for everything else, the tracks that have two dates, they got their two dates, and then the Bristol dirt race is being turned into dirt. Once again, I think we should be optimistic for that. Um, I know there are a lot of people upset that Bristol's losing a normal date, but I, I personally like it. So yeah, um, last thoughts once again. I just, I always feel like I'm forgetting to say something, but man, not much to say other than I'm, I'm blown away by the schedule. I, I, I applaud NASCAR for this. Uh, Daytona Road Course is going to be seen. It's not a points-paying race, but it's in the Clash. So uh, shout out to them for doing that. Uh, new tracks like Circuit of the Americas, Road America. Uh, shout out to NASCAR once again for doing that. I think that's a great addition. Indianapolis Road Course is a great addition. Um, then Bristol Dirt, I'm optimistic for it. If it doesn't go well, go back to pavement. If it goes really well, maybe we can keep that. I don't know. Um, but then as for everything else, um, I, I like that we're keeping some of these major races in the same dates that they normally are. Daytona 500, obviously. Uh, Charlotte, I think, might... Hold on, let me look something up. Charlotte still is Memorial Day weekend. It still is, according to Google. So we're keeping that date. Um, what are the other major races? The Southern 500 is keeping its date on Labor Day weekend, it looks like. Uh, Brickyard 400 is no longer a thing. I guess the Indianapolis Road Course, I don't know if that replaces it. That keeps on getting switched around. And then the Bristol Night Race keeps on getting switched around. So I like that we're keeping some of the traditional dates like the Southern 500, the Coke 600, the Daytona 500. Good job, NASCAR. But I'm excited for the schedule. I'm going to try to make it to as many races as I can, if I can. Um, if I can get to the Circuit of the Americas, that would be cool. But other than that... I think that wraps this up. I think I gave as many thoughts as I, as I could. Uh, once again, if you just have questions about something, leave it in the comments. I would love to answer them for you. I think it's going to be a really fun schedule next year. We'll talk about in our 2021 season preview who I like for this schedule and stuff, who's going to do good. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I, I Dude, it's going to be a fun, fun time. I'm telling you. Uh, but yeah. Make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe, share, all that stuff.